Hello everybody, I'm back. It's been a long time since since I got to get on here. I got a couple updates and a little bit of what I've been doing and how I've been doing. So stay with me and I'll explain to you. I'm back, really, I am, and I am feeling a lot better. Uh, <laughs> after Christmas and everything, I got, as you can see, I got a bad flare. I had a lot of uh, had a family stressful thing, and on top of that, I got the influenza A, and that was rough. It made my hemoglobin go down and my um, blood pressure go down that, I mean, I believe it just about killed me because there was days that, I, there was one time, it was like the third day, second or third day of it, and it tried to close my lungs up. And so I was lucky enough to have an albuterol to open it up and open it back up and assemble court and it was just barely, I could just barely breathe it in to get it in there. And so I had to do that twice to get it to, to where I could breathe. So I stopped diamond painting through all this. Um, you know how it is when you're sick, you're sick. And weak, it takes a long time to get better. Uh, my hemoglobin has been low, it's still low. So I'm going to do blood work this week, um, tomorrow and then the next week to see how I'm doing. But in the meantime, I, as I was feeling better, um, Valentine's Day came <laughs> and went. But I was like, well, I have this little Valentine's Day diamond painting that I'm going to go ahead and get done. And so I felt good enough to, took me about three days to do it with a couple day, re, days in the middle that I was took away from it. But this is it. It's a round, 30 by 40. It's a little boy at the door. He's waiting on him to open the door and his little dog has the little Valentine's. You can't really tell it's a heart. It's a little small. It would have been better if it was a little bigger. You really can't see his face very well. But you can tell what it is. You know those are balloons and it's a front door and there's a little kitty down here. Now some of the colors like this, this turned out to be pink. I don't know if it'll show up on there, but it's pink where it should be white and blue in the shadows for that little dog. And just some of these colors are just really so brilliant. I think their, their computer screens are a little too, uh, I don't know how, how, how you'd say it, but are seeing the colors a little bit too uh, saturated because the, the skin tones and things are, it's like this one. This one, the, stin, the skin tones turned out much yellower. She looks jaundiced. <laughs> so, but it's okay. It's still a cute picture and they do pictures like that. They use other colors instead of the, you know, regular stuff, it's still art. So I'm gonna, if you have any questions about that, I will, find out and put in the link below where I got this one. I'm thinking I got it off of eBay. Maybe it was one of the, um, it might've been the one of the Peggy buys that I got. Uh, I did run out of one color and I had like four, about four left that I needed to do, but I got a color, one of the other colors that was close to it and put it in there, so you can't tell. Anyways, um, got that. I wanted to tell you, um, I can't wear makeup right now because I've really, really broke out from having been so sick. My sugar went up and, and then it's went down and, you know, just stress and, and being sick and, you know how that goes. 
But while I'm here, I wanted to uh, show you some of my artwork that I have done over the years. Um, I am an equine artist, which you said is a horse artist, and I have won awards, and the Lord has blessed me with that. And um, when my horse died, I stopped um, doing it because it just kind of fell out with me. It went with her, so because she was like my best friend, so it kind of went with her. I know you could probably understand because I know a lot of you out there have pets that you just love, 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 love. So they're your babies, so you understand what I'm coming from. I grew up with her. She was my first horse, and I had other horses during having her, and they came and went, and she always stayed. She was mine. So, anyways, it led me from, a, well, it just added to the fact that I, um, I wanted a horse so much that I, I I drew them, just like any other little girl, grew up on the Black Stallion. And I read all the books, you know, typical. But I was really determined to have my own horse. And the Lord blessed me with one. I also, uh, you know, I drew, since I was like three, horses and, and things. So um, I just wanted to share with you some of my artwork that I have already showed you in one of my other videos. My... Um, carousel one from that's a painted from a picture I took at Dollywood years ago um, so I won't show that one again right now this is and it's really dusty on top because I haven't gotten out and messed with them so excuse the dust this is Sunday silence he won the Kentucky Derby, or the Santa Anita Derby, San Felipe, Santa Anita Derby, Kentucky Derby, Preakness, and was second in the Belmont. Then he went on to win the uh, Haskell and a couple others. I think another one in between there. And loved this little horse. He was like the Black Stallion. He was wild. He was the son of Halo. Halo was, was, um, uh, mean horse. They had to keep a muzzle on him. He'd get people down, try to kill them. So this was one of his sons. So you know the name Halo is his daddy's name and his name's Sunday Silence. So yeah, a lot of people may remember him. But it's a uh, colored pencil on paper and I'm getting it close so you can see the different colors that is actually in his coat that I put in there. It may be fading. Hope not. You can see. And the jockey is Pat Valenzuela. Very controversial jockey. He's on again, off again, losing his license to ride because he was reckless. Um... Okay, now this is a one year, um, I think it was 2001, we went to Con Churchill Downs and I took this picture of the races there that day. And this is the scoreboard and the infield where they give the ra roses to tr and the trophy for the Kentucky Derby. And I called it Rush Hour. And it's oil on canvas. All of it's oil. And I'll move it up so you can see a little bit more of the details. I'm trying not to knock over some other things I've got to show you. But that is from a picture I took myself while visiting Churchill Downs. And it was on Firecracker, the Firecracker States Day, I think 2001, I'm not, I'd have to look it up. Okay, now everybody should know this name. I'm not going to say who it is until I show you. <laughs> and with, a new mo with his movie that just recently come out, you should understand that that is the Great Secretariat. 
the Great Secretariat. And I, I'm sorry for the little, um, I'm just going to be behind here talking. This is the se Secretariat. And Ronnie Turk, and Ronnie Turcotte. And this was the Preakness Leap that he did. When he, when he was running the Preakness, he did a sudden, he was behind all the horses when they come out of the gate, a few yards out of the gate. And he just decided he didn't want to be back there no more. And he jumped like he was steeplechasing and then run around the whole field on the first turn. Blew one of the other jockey's numbers off his shoulder and sounded like a freight train when he came by. So that, that was a uh, colored pencil on paper. This one is Padron. They get bigger, youngins. And we'll have to move backwards. <laughs> this is Padron, which is a, a American and uh, international, Canadian, and American champion, Arabian show horse. And that was uh, charcoal on paper. And let you let's see if I can get it up there and you can see some of the details in it. The eye. The eyes is always so important. You've got to have that eye just right. Because some horses have the look of eagles. The, the, there's certain something in their eyes. There's just, if you don't get it right, then they don't have human looking eyes. Now, some of them do, but it's a rare thing. It's not too rare, but it's, it's called a walleye where they'll have white around their eye. And they actually, you can see all the way around, white around their eye. And when they look, to me, it freaks me out. It's just, I, I don't like it. <laughs> I can't bother me. When they look at, there was bathing one on TV the other day, and it had that, and it looked back at them, <laughs> and it was just you, usually you can't tell which way they're looking, except, except they turn their head or whatever, and then it literally looked looked back with its eye, and it was like a fish, you know, it's just like a a, a fish on a wall going, you know, <laughs> it's just freaky. Okay, now this is skip away. <clears throat> We went on location and saw him at his farm, and he is no longer living, neither is Secretary of Sunday Silence. Um, but this is Skip Away. He was one of the uh, most mon money winners, the highest money winners till recently. And I think he had made over six or seven million at the racetrack. Major races, not no little little races. But skip away. He was he was tough. Um, he he'd show out when you come to see him. You couldn't get close to him. He'd bite you. And uh, if he saw you watching him out in the pasture, he'd put on a show. He died of a heart attack in his paddock. Which a lot of them do, you know, once as they get get older. It's normal. And that, again, is charcoal on paper. I think I have one more on charcoal on paper. So a lot of my artwork is, um, I have some hanging in a college here in South Carolina. And I have a bunch of my artwork has went to some, I used to do a free painting or a drawing or sketch of the Derby winner every year. I'd send it off to the uh, owners and a lot of times they'd send me stuff back and thank you for the picture. I'm sure they have a lot of people doing that, but I like to know that they have that in their their collections and have something of mine because their horse, I'll, I don't bet. I just love to watch them. And so here's another one. This is a 
it's not, I don't know really, I don't really remember who it was, but it is a Arabian saddle horse, which could be half saddle bred, half Arabian, and they call them saddle horses, they're registered American saddle horse, um, and they can also be registered in Amer the Arabian uh, registration, and this is the English pleasure uh, where they actually weight their feet, which I'm not fond of. They just barely weight these feet. They're not as bad as the Tennessee Walkers, but um, they just barely weight it. It's not, the, the industry is really strict about what weights of horseshoes should be on these horses. They don't come out there on those big weights like the Tennessees do. These, it's just a metal shoe, you know, but they do step high, but they, they look for the Arabians that have a tendency to pull their knees up a little higher than most other horses, uh, most other Arabians. And the ones that don't, that just have a regular gait, they usually go for Western Pleasure or Hunt, hunt See, you know, hunter type. But anyways, this is uh, just a, a chestnut with black, blonde mane and tail, like sort of like my horse I had, and that is charcoal on paper. Okay. Now, I, I, now that's not half, not half of some of the stuff I've done over the years. Um, <laughs> but I, I am very impatient, um, ADD. I have to get into other things. Um, I lose my interest in doing the same uh, media. Like the, if you noticed, I've done some in watercolor. A lot of them are over at my dad's and mom's house. Uh, because I'd always get, I used to do Indians, a lot of Indians on horseback and things. And he loves that, the Westerns and stuff. So... He would end up with them because <laughs> he would fall in love with them. I love that picture. Give it to me. So, uh, so he, they have a lot of my pictures and art. So <laughs> it's, I didn't feel like going over there and dragging them out. No, it's been raining really bad here. But anyways, um, I would go from, I started out in oils and then I went to acrylics, which I would uh, paint my acrylics similar to oils. <laughs> My art teacher used to, whenever there would be an artist in residence that come in to work with them, with the, t the, the school, uh, the students, to do murals, and she would describe my pictures as, you know, she paints these acrylics like oil. They look like oil paintings. And I, it always impressed me that she said that. So, you know, I must have been, I never considered that. I never even thought of that. But that's what she had told him. Um, that resident artist that had come in. And then there would be, uh, I had switched to, uh, I'd do the watercolor. I'd go from oil to, to acrylic to watercolor. And then watercolor I don't like because I can't really control the whole thing and I can't fix it once it's messed up. Some things you just can't fix. And I'm a heavy handed person. It just, my mom's great with watercolor because she's very patient and light-handed. So, that went on to colored pencils. I realized that I could get almost the same amount of detail with my colored pencils as I could with paint. And then it went over into, uh, you know, the charcoal and I loved it because I didn't have to worry about matching colors. I just had to look at the, the shadows, the, the, the variations of, of shade. It's not lines that makes your picture, it's the shade. It's the, it's the different value to, and everything like that. Okay, so then I, I have always wanted to do, I'm very picky about sculptures. I have always, all my life, hated little old horse sculpture, resins, things that where the horse, the legs are just huge and chunky, the face ain't right, 
cartoons where they don't get the horse's gait right, all those things. So I always wanted to make my own bronze and I tried, once I learned how to do some clay work, I realized that there's no way I'm going to be able to do this in clay because it, you have to leave it hollow and, and things like that. Well, I found, I saw what doll makers were using. They were using polymer clay and, uh, and I researched how they did the lost wax method, the wax methods or whatever. I don't have the money to be able to take my art, my sculptures to the foundry to have it done in bronze. So I would have to take, I, I just couldn't take anything to the foundry. Um, it's just like 5000 2000 to $5,000 to get it put in bronze. And then if you do multiples and then you, you got to have a limited edition, I mean, it's expensive. And so I started looking at how uh, some of the, uh, found out about polymer clay. This is what porcelain doll artists use. And it can be fired in your oven at home. So I researched about it and I learned how to do that. And this is the second, it's dusty. This is the second sculpture that I ever did in polymer clay. And what it does is you build your wire armature, the skeleton, and then you put aluminum foil around the thick body areas and then you, you detail it. And so I'm gonna let you see up close. I'm gonna focus because my head's in the way. There, there's a little bit of it. You can see it's mad. And see his face. He is a Madden. A Madden. He's mad. He's wild. And even his teeth inside have the little. There we go. You can let's see if I can get in the mouth. But that he's. If you look at how big his face is. To my hand. So that's my second only ever him. Okay, that's my second only ever. This one is from a picture that I took at Disney World where the Main Street horse trolleys, uh, it was so hot that day, and this guy took his hat off, and he wiped his face in front of the horse, and that's how I wanted to portray this one. The sad thing about it is, is when it was in a art show, um, at the end of the art show, I came to pick it up, and someone, this little man right here, was bent back like that. He was literally bent back like that. Someone thinking this was really bronze picked it up by the man and what happened, or a child, because it was a festival of flowers in Greenwood, South Carolina, uh, or a child just got it and, you know. So I was just so devastated. I was devastated because I cram when I do these and I do everything with my hands. I bend the metal all by my hands. I don't use uh, pliers. All of this inside is uh, aluminum foil. I'll squeeze down to get all the air out because polymer clay has to cook at every fourth of an inch for 15 minutes on a certain setting. If you have a little thin stuff up here and then a big fat belly down here, 
You'll have to cook it till this gets brittle and ain't there no more. So you have to keep everything about the same thickness so this won't, the little, little things won't go away. But anyways, just to let you see, and it still has the, it still had the, the art show. And so, i just let you see this face of the horse, if you can. And see his nails and his hooves. For the, do you see? Get the little man's rear end out your way. Now, if I drop this, it's, I'm, I'll cry. <laughs> and so, you can see the, all the hooves and the hair. A little short tail that they have and the harnessing that was on him. See, I know how horses are supposed to be shaped from the bottom and from the top from having my own horses. I could literally do these. I could sculpt a horse with my eyes closed. I really could. Because I can close my eyes and I know wherever, whatever, all the parts of a horse, how it feels and the shapes of it. And so the little man, you can see where that person grabbed it. So I had to straighten him back up and you can see this other side. And the horse is looking at him like, yep, yeah, I know it's hot, dude. And this is the this color is not what the polymer clay is. Um, it's a flesh color, peach color, and I have to once I once I bake it. Let me see if I can show you. Now this one has some other. I did the base with some other colored, mixed some of my leftovers just to use it up on the base. And let me see if I can see. No, I, I painted that all the way around. Um, anyways, I'll show you in this next one. Now these have gotten dust on them. I didn't wipe them off yet, so please ignore the dust. And I do mix the uh, bronze color up in paint, acrylic paint, um, liquid X mixed in with future floor wax because it's all acrylic. So it makes it uh, thin and it keeps it from stick being sticky. If you use any, some of the other acrylics, it'll stay tacky on these. Okay. Now I wanted to do a bigger, you notice I get bigger and bigger. I wanted to do a sculpture of two horses fighting entwined. So I drew it and then I made, I'm gonna put that one back over there. I made this one. I know that looks weird, doesn't it? See all that dust on there? I am so sorry, I should have wiped it off. But I just, I wanted to come in here and do this real quick and I was just like, I'm on. I can't find, I don't know if I have a cloth in here. Anyways, I'll wipe it off before I put it back. And here goes, this is how he is made. And my name, I do believe, where did I put my name? Oh, it's back here. Um, this is called, let's see, Anger and, oh, I can't even remember. Fury, I think. Anger and, aggra anger and aggression. One's angry because the other one is being aggressive. And so let me clean him up a little bit. It's got a little bit too much dust on him. But it kind of makes him look old, don't it? Um, let's see if you can see his face. Now he's got his mouth open. It might look funny to the, the camera and the angles. Because <laughs> you know how when you take pictures of horse up close, they look really, really, really funny. But their mouth, he's got his tongue in there, his teeth. 
and he's turning around because the other horse is being aggressive. He's gonna fight back. So the hair's flying. But this is my favorite one right here. <laughs> okay, now he sits like right there now. And this one I had finished before I ever even sculpted this one. So let me get this dust off his head. Uh, I had him up on my on the top of my curio. And it's like the top of your um, refrigerator. If anybody gets up there and looks at the top of the refrigerator, that probably be like me. Oh, Lord, don't look at Don't look. Don't look at that. Okay, so he's the darker bronze, so he looks more like he's black in the... And the way I have done him is he's actually going after... He's got a star on his head. You see, he's he's going to bite. It looks kind of weird in some of these angles because of the way that they're formed, but that's okay. So it's sort of like they've come up out of liquid metal and they're fighting at each other. And you can see how that kind of the designs in the base down here, you can see some of the, oh my goodness, I'm gonna start sneezing in it. You see the designs kind of goes up into the, like it's getting life up into there, like the, the metal has become horses. It's not metal. I've actually fooled, I literally fooled a man who does bronze all the time. That's all he does over in Spartanburg. When, oh, Winston, Winston Wingo, I think. I may be saying the wrong person. But when we was delivering these to a uh, to the show over there for the guild, he literally had to go pick them up. And when he picked it up, oh, that's not bronze. I love it. He's like, I love how you made it look like, like it's coming up out of, the, out of metal. What was that? And then whenever... You tell them that it's polymer clay and they turn around and walk off. You don't get the same respect because you're using cheap materials. Even though some people use tires and things and everybody and, and glass bottles and oh my gosh, ketchup packets. I've seen people do pictures with gum, chewed gum, and they're in museums. Anyways, but he did. He, he went over there, picked it. I thought that was bronze. You did good on making it look like a bronze. But once he said, once I told him it was a polymer clay, it was, uh -huh, you know, nothing important. I guess it was just surprising that somebody else did bronze and he went over and Wanted to see it, but this is how they're supposed to intertwine. Just like that. Now let me see. I'm going to hold it in each one in, in a different hand and let you see if that's a better view. This is how they fit together. One's an aggressor, anger, one's angry. Angry, anger and aggression, right there. So, I'm quite happy with the way those turned out. They, the, the um, show was supposed to, what they do is they get a judge in to look through all the artwork and they throw out the ones they don't want to be in the show. These did not make it in the show. The uh, baskets that someone weaved made it in the show, which is nice for them. That's great. But that's all the 3D they had. They did, I mean, they said no. 
I guess they were, they were boycotting anything made of polymer clay. Anyways, this is the color of the polymer clay at the bottom. And you have to stick it down to, uh, stick it on a glass. I use a old <laughs> microwave plate that, you know, is in the center of your microwave. I stick it down on there and then I stick my skeleton on it and then and and get it all in there and then put another layer on top well put some aluminum foil and then another layer of, of polymer clay and blend it together and then I go up the skeleton with the with the I've already bent it the way it's supposed to be and then all of this is aluminum foil and wire so it looks kind of flat on the side like that <laughs> but that's just arty, artsy He's turning his head around to get to this horse, you know, what they do. But yeah, that is just a few. I do have some others that I don't have on hand. Sorry about the dust, youngins. But anyways, I hope you enjoyed that. I'm hoping to get back into my diamond painting quickly. Um, and go to my Facebook page. And if I, I'm going to put up a few pictures that I want, I'm consider on, considering doing. Would you rather me do diamond painting, um, a big diamond painting or a small diamond painting? Go to my Facebook page. I may even put up, do you want me to do a model house, step-by-step -step little tiny model houses that I had? Or you can choose which thing you want me to do. So the, the majority of y'all can tell me. Uh, what you'd like for me to do and that, that'll help me I may do it and it just depends if my health is a little better you know I'm I hope that uh, I do and and I hate to hear of all these people around the world getting this um, awful coronavirus I really am very worried that it's gonna come over here we have a, a, a nice vacation planned um, in a couple months that I'm afraid it's going to cause that place to shut down. Um, I hope it doesn't. I'm praying that it doesn't. And I hope everybody gets better and nobody dies from it. And I know these this influenza A just about killed me. The swine flu just about killed me when I had it that year. Um, I'm dreading the fact that this is coming over here. So everybody be, better be praying, better be very good about being clean, wipe your handles off at the store, uh, use the hand sanitizers and things like that after you go to the grocery stores. People, if you feel sick, wear a mask. You don't know what you have and what you give to it. Other people that have immune system compromised, immune system like I have, it can literally go like that and within a, within two days that I just couldn't breathe. So I hope everyone has a great rest of their week and look for my Facebook post on what next should I do. I'm going to let you choose. Thank you.